Hello and welcome to Library Salad. Today's episode is Golden Book Birdhouse brought to you by the Monroeville Public Library in Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Alice and that's right, we are going to take these golden books and actually upcycle them. A uh, simple definition of upcycle is to take an item and change it to where it's actually bought to have a little bit of more value. Um, these are things, golden books, people have been treasuring them uh, for such a long time, uh, but there comes a time where it becomes um, loved so much, let's call it loved so much, that pages could be torn, uh, missing, written on, um, and that could be a good opportunity to then turn it into something else. Where can you get a golden book? I have found them at thrift stores. And again, you can use it, things that you have at your own house, maybe the children have outgrown them. Uh, there are half price bookstores, things like that. And you can find one that's just uh, ready to be turned into another treasure. So what I did was I went to the store and I got this. This is one of the older golden books that there are. Um, I like the fact that it had to do with the topic, but you can use any topic. There were a lot from different holidays, so that if you wanted to make it as a decoration during a holiday, you could take a book that um, had th that cover and even uh, painted your birdhouse accordingly. And speaking of birdhouses, where does one get a birdhouse? A lot of places, a lot of craft stores. I happen to be fortunate enough that this was at the library from a previous program. So I didn't even, it was even painted. I couldn't have asked for an easier way to start this off, but a lot of craft stores even have them um, already done. They're already assembled for about five bucks. So let's see you got one had to be painted. You could choose depending on you know what book you got. You can simply use any colors that you want. So this is going to be relatively um, an easy project. Again, decorate for the holidays. Imagine something like this even for Halloween. The roof. Okay, makes me just want to break into song. Anyway, so with the golden book, what I first did was golden books, as you know, there's not a lot of pages to them. So it is easier to cut them out. I simply used one of the X-Acto knives. Um, if you just have scissors, you can, you can certainly do that. Um, when I picked out which golden books I was going to use, um, certain criteria that I found helpful. Um, since the golden book is going to be for the roof, simply covered like this, See how nicely that lines up. All we have to do then is say, okay, I'm gonna be putting a page over here. So as you're looking through the book to say, will this work? Uh, I found that this had a couple of full page pictures. So by simply just taking one of them, let's go with this one, and when we glue it on, something that simple is gonna complete the actual roof. Now they are recommending that if you wanted to, and if you have a tool that would work, if you wanted to cut this further, you could. I'm taking the easy way out on this one and we're just gonna slap it on, put a little glue and we'll be good. Now, how does one do the rest of it? I will recommend that, I like the fact that it was painted all this way because you, then you don't have to worry about, am I covering something? Um, sufficiently or not. The most difficult area that I'm thinking is the fact that this is going to be a little bit difficult to simply take a picture and place it with a hole, this is uh, perch is sticking out. But what I did was I said, let me just take the, one of the first pages of the book. And this is how I got to this part. I had, that's, that's going to be, wait a second, okay, let's go with this. So, my issue was how to get it 
So I said, okay, if I'm going, that this part is gonna be somewhat equal. And then I put it in and bring it all the way up to that top. And then with my finger, just taking it like this and like this with the exacto knife. Let's see if I can do this without an injury. Place your bets now, people. Okay, so I've got it like that and I've got this in here. Then if I'm simply putting it down, then that's, yay. So that's there and then I'm doing the same on the other side. That's easy enough and then simply with a tape measure to measure across to know that once this is inserted here what would be the correct cutting that you have to do you can always trim it off if you go a little bit um, over on that but this i decided to try it a little bit with a little measuring okay that's where i am did you see what he did you're welcome here? no problem so I tried to determine what's the area where this is going to be able to come through. And of course, it's not an exact science, at least to me. So it didn't exactly work out. It's exacto. Thank you for the commercial. Yep. Okay, so what I did was I said, well, if I make it bigger, it will fit in. I happen to have a little uh, cutter, like a little cookie cutter. Um, for the uh, linser cookie, but you can do it on your own. Like if you decide you want to do a heart or, or a smaller circle down there and just cut it out. See, when this goes in, I think that looks fine. You know what I mean? Getting that to be an exact around it is, I don't think really possible. Let's be serious. So that if you simply do that, a little bit of frustration is gone on that. What I simply did to get this part was when I, is completely over it. I simply went like this and took the knife around it. That made it come out as easy as this. Since that's the most difficult part, think of it, you're like halfway through at this point. Now, the sides of this, I measured the sides, and then I decided, look through the book, what's going to fit? I just decided to go in within here. You could go the whole thing. Your, may, your birdhouse may actually not have this area open. So you could just go easy like that. So what I did was I said, which is a good picture? I decided that I would take, cut this part out. And even though I measured it, I don't know what I was measuring. I thought I was measuring here. Okay, it's a little bit smaller than I want, but does it matter? Does anyone know except now half the country. Um, so you can simply cut it out like that by doing the first one. The other side, we're thinking is close to similar. So this is your template to then, what I did was, I figured for the other side, let's do one of the ducks. All I had to do was put this over the duck, again with the exact, <laughs> if anyone's keeping the score, how many times has he removed the exact knife? I think two fingers two, so far. Two. Okay, okay. So you can use this as a template. That's going to give you this part. This one can also go over there. So the only thing that's you may, I have no idea why this wire is here, if they were hanging it up by this. Okay, but this is going to come off. And then what's going to be easier this time, because it doesn't have the hole or the perch, it'll be easier to take another piece of paper and just simply cut it out and put it on. Google. People are recommending the Mod Podge. All right. Some people say you can make your own Mod, Mod Podge, which is simply three parts glue, one part water. Everybody seems to be happy with that mix. I did read, however, that Mod Podge is a step up from regular glue. It's actually got a sealer in it. So if you want the birdhouse and these papers to have a longer life, you're probably gonna to wanna to use the Mod Podge. If you're just trying this out 
you say, I just have glue, that's all I want to do with it, then absolutely. So what happens is these pictures, we're going to put the Mod Podge on, we're going to, I'm going to use the hot glue on the, where's the roof? I'm going to use the hot glue on this because this way, I think it needs a little extra to put that down. And then once we put the Mod Podge down, put that over, we're going to take just another coating on top of it and that's going to help to seal it in. So we'll get started with, let's go here, simple brush, again, new brush or clean crap brush. You know what I mean? Just don't, when you do this, you don't put it back, what? I have no idea. I'm getting, I'm getting hand signals here. I have, I have no idea. What you're yeah, keep going. Oh, you're fine. So I'm going to start with this and by simply, we've got everything ready to go down. Just a coat on it like that. It doesn't have to be, we don't want to, whoop, to see that was not right. That wasn't right. Just a coat like this and that's going to go over and be right back. So everything's been glued. A couple of helpful hints that when you use glue, go as swiftly as possible because glue dries quickly. Also, the um, way that people talk about being able to do that is to put the glue down, then the paper. Um, most of the time, the recommendation is wait till that's dry and then come over with the top thin coat of the Mod Podge. I myself am not going to take the time to wait. So I just simply went over it. Should be fine, but since it's just really a sample, um, this was a glossy Mod Podge. That's what's got, it's still a little wet. And between that and the gloss, that's what we're gonna see. So, front, let's take this around. I really like the coloring of this. I think it has a real potential to um, you can even elaborate with these things, but I like the way you turn it out. Hope you do too. And one last helpful hint, if you're using the Mod Podge, open the windows, op just get ventilation because this stuff really smells. <laughs> I'm just in it. Two hours later, we're still going, woo! See you in two weeks. <laughs>